Okay, welcome back. This is question number three from the P3 sample assessment paper for the international A level. Um, this question is about the absolute value function. And what we're going to do here is we're going to answer this question where figure one shows a sketch of a part of the graph y equals f of x. You can see it's like an, a v shape, which is typical of the absolute value function. And as we see in the equation for f of x, you have these two vertical lines, okay, which show you have absolute value function in there. And it says um, where f of x equals two times the absolute value of three minus x and then plus 5, where x is greater than or equal to 0. So basically, they've only drawn it for the positive values of x, including 0. Okay, And um, the other parts are not part of this particular function. Now, they're asking us for part A to solve the equation f of x equals a half x plus 30. So we're going to see where it intersects the graph half x plus 30. Now, first of all, let's um, try and make sense of this. Now, what I personally like to do in these type of questions is try to figure out which branch of the, the function is um, the positive part and which is the negative part. Because remember, the absolute value of a, of, a, of a function, for example, the absolute value of 5 is, of uh, x sorry, is equal to 5 means either x is 5 or x is negative 5. When you put the absolute value of something inside the, the sign, you just write down its, its magnitude, not its direction, not its, you know, whether it's to the left or to the right of the number of zero on the number line, you just write how far away it is from zero, basically. So the function f of x equals two times the modulus of three minus x plus five has two branches. One branch is when this is a positive inside here, and the other branch is when this is a negative inside here. So let's take the first branch as if it was positive. So let's say f of x is equal to 2 times 3 minus x plus 5. Okay, so f of x is equal to 6 minus 2x plus 5. So you can say f of x is equal to 11 minus 2x. Okay, so that's the part of the graph which has a negative gradient and passes through 11 on the y-axis. So we can deduce from that that this part of the graph is represented with this equation. So here we have 11 and the equation of this part of the graph is y equals 11 minus 2x. Okay, And the, the second branch of the graph is when this part is negative. So we say 2 times, in, now instead of writing 3 minus x, if I write minus 3 plus x, or you can say x minus 3, same thing, plus 5, that's what it's going to be given by. Okay, so my f of x equals... Okay, that's the second part of the graph, which we're going to have, that's going to say f of x equals 2x minus 6 plus 5. So f of x equals 2x minus 1. So this is this part of the graph. Okay, y equals 2x minus 1. You can see it has a positive gradient. And if you continue it down, it's going to go through somewhere in the negative side of the y-axis. Okay, so this part is the part which can be represented by y equals 2x minus 1, and this part, y, 11 minus 2x. Okay, now, uh, we're going to now solve the equation f of x equals a half x plus 30. Now, of course, a half x plus 30 is going to cross the y-axis a uh, point higher than 11. Okay, so let me just uh, continue this line on, just to show you, just to illustrate. So if I continue this line, upwards, just extend the y-axis just to make it look a bit more realistic. Let's say 30 is up here somewhere, it's not to scale. Now y equals a half x plus 30, I need to make it a bit lower, I'm going to run out of space. Okay, y equals a half x plus 30 will be a line which has a positive gradient which is quite shallow and it will go through 30 on the y-axis. Let's say it looks something like this. Okay, now this line, y equals 2x minus 1, is going to continue going up like this. So you're going to see it's going to intersect over here. And I'm going to draw this dotted and you'll understand why in a minute. But um, this line on this side, if I draw it from here onwards, extend it 
it's also going to hit this line y equals a half x plus 30 at this point over here so this is a graph y equals a half x plus 30 let me get rid of this stuff here okay so now we can see that this solution the solution to this equation is two there's two solutions however because of the condition that x has to be greater than or equal to zero we can see that this solution is going to be for a negative x value so all i'm looking for is this this solution here okay so that is when y equals 2x minus 1 is equal to y equals a half x plus 30 so i have to solve simultaneously okay this pair of equations so i've got y equals a half x plus 30 and y equals 2x minus 1. If I try to solve y equals a half x plus 30 and y equals 11 minus 2x, I would get a negative x value and that would contradict the fact that we only need positive x values because this function doesn't exist in the negative side because it's been defined as being x is greater than equal to 0. So therefore that solution I can't include. So let me take the solution to this pair of equations over here. Okay. What's going on over there? Is it crashing on me? Yes, okay, here we are. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to solve this pair of solution, this pair of equations. Okay, and this pair will give us a solution which we don't need. Okay, so let's now solve this simultaneously. The, probably the easiest way is to equate them. 2x minus 1 is equal to a half x plus 30 because they're both equal to the same thing. So you can equate them to each other. Okay, let's make that a bit neater. A half x plus 30 so we do 2x minus a half x which is 1 and a half x 3 over 2x is equal to 30 plus 1 which is 31 so x is going to be 62 over 3 okay and that's perfectly fine as my answer let's see how the question solve the equation okay so x equals 62 over 3 that's the only solution that we need this solution if i solve this will give me a negative value of x I only want the positive value of x, so there we have the answer to part A. Okay, so part B now. It says, given that the equation f of x equals k, where k is a constant, has two distinct roots, state the set of possible values for k. Okay, now, y equals k. Okay, f of x equals k, which is the same as saying y equals k. k is a constant. That's going to be a line which is horizontal. Okay, horizontal line. Let me draw it. Um, doesn't matter if it's dotted actually. Okay, it's a horizontal line that passes through k on the y-axis. So I've got to find the values of k such that this line will um, have basically, if it has two distinct root, two distinct roots, it's, it's the, all the places where this line will cut this function in two distinct separate places. And you can see that down here. Okay, below the V shape, there's no solutions, there's no distinct roots. Okay, at the point where the V touches the line, at this point, there's one distinct root. Okay, and then above that, there's two distinct roots, two distinct roots all the way until you get to the point where the curve hits the Y axis. And that's the last point at which there's two distinct roots. When above that, you end up with having one distinct root. Okay, so we need to find the range of values Okay, between this point here and that point there. So I need to find what this point is over here. Okay, and I need to find what this point is over here where okay, um, the V is of this graph. Now for the first point here, this is pretty easy because we need to remember if you look from the look at the other page, the graph on this side is y equals 11 minus 2x. So I know that this is 11. So I know that's like in my... Uh, range of values, I know that k has to be less than or equal to 11, okay, because when it's equal to 11, you're going to have two solutions, if it's less than 11, there's also two solutions, but that stops at this point over here, when this, this value here is what I need to find. Now you can find this in various ways, um, probably the easiest way is to look at the transformation of this graph. Okay, now the 3 minus the v-shape of this graph, if you think about the parent function, which is y equals a modulus of x, now that will have a v-shape, like, um, like over here, 
looks something like that. That's how it looks originally, right? And then what's happened is that V shape has been, let me just uh, join these together. That V shape has been, first of all, it's been translated three spaces to the left. This is a plus three inside the function. So it's moved three spaces to the left. And then it's been reflected in the y-axis because you have a minus x inside the function. So it's going to go to three. That would be three. And then it's been multiplied by two. So because the whole the y values will be multiplied by two, it will stay where it is, this particular v-shape. But everything else would kind of like uh, um, get a bit squashed up. Okay. And then it's lifted up by five spaces okay so that must be five here okay i can see that from the transformation in the curve in the graph okay however if you're not sure about that if you're not sure about that what we can do is i can show you in a different way okay i can show you that this is the line or well, this part of the line is y equals 2x minus 1 okay and this part of the line is y equals 11 minus 2x so these two branches um, of the curve, okay, 11 minus 2x and y equals 2x minus 1. Um, as I said, we could also find out where they intersect, and that will be, or well, the y value of that point will be, okay, this point where this v shape is. So if we just equate them with each other, 2x minus 1 equals 11 minus 2x, you'll end up with 4x equals 12 the x's and the numbers together so x equals 12 over 4 which is 3 and the y value if we just substitute into one of these two so 2 times 3 which is 6 minus 1 which is 5 so you can see the y value of this point is 5 and the x value is 3 what we're interested in is, is this y value so we can see that this is the number that will go over here so x so when k is 5 okay when k is 5 there's one to six solution but when it's just above 5 there are two distinct solutions all the way until when k is equal to 11. Okay, once it goes above 11, there's only one distinct solution. So this is the solution to the problem here. Um, because of the wording of the question, to state the set of possible values for k, I would personally, to be sure, so to be safe, I would write this in, in set notation. Okay, the set of possible values for k. So what we could say is, we could say that um, k is going to be equal to, okay, um, we can say k is a member of the real numbers. Okay, you can take all, it's not just entities, all the values, fractions and decimals, but it's, value is between 5 and 11. 5 itself can't be included but everything above it and everything up to and including 11. So that would be the answer in set notation although I'm sure that this would also be acceptable but because of the word set of possible values for k that would be maybe on the safe side if you wrote it like that that would be better. Okay. And there we have the answer for this question number three.